What's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Tag Shot. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited to bring you the M&P 10 millimeter in all of its glory. There have been so many requests from from the community to Smith and Wesson to make a 10 millimeter in their M&P pistol lineup. I, more requests than I've probably ever seen from any manufacturer for really anything. And we finally have one here, dude. Super excited. Smith & Wesson, big thanks to those guys for sending this out so we could review it and get this out to you quickly. So it'll kind of kind of take it as a rolling review. I'll continue to shoot it and um, you know report back to you guys what I continue to think in the future. Maybe even get a Glock and compare it to that if that's something you want to see. Make sure you drop me a like on the video, man. And subscribe if you're not already. Big thanks to our patrons and all your support. And I got to thank today's sponsor. Check this out, dude. So what Hyper Yeon has made are these RFID NFC Bluetooth blockers. And basically you slide your key in here, close the case. I try to start up my truck, no key detected. It won't work so basically you get home every single day put your key in there and you don't have anything to worry about and if you have a push button start vehicle and they're able to get your signal with these relay boxes that can be easily had they can drive off with your vehicle your second biggest investment outside of your home <laughs> and it could just go away without you even knowing which is pretty crazy even if you don't have a push button start vehicle just a regular lock unlock type of key they can still get into your car and steal your stuff so all of my viewers, all of my subscribers get 25% off plus free shipping. So you're talking about a $40 investment to protect one of your biggest investments and also protect your privacy because I don't know if you've ever been stolen from. It sucks. It's one of the worst feelings ever. And if I can protect myself with something like this, yeah, I'm definitely bound to do that. They also have a juggernaut series like this. I actually prefer the Centennial just because I like the way it opens and the top doesn't come off. But they both have their little pros and cons. So there you go. There's the Hyper Eon Man. Link's down below with your discount code ready for you. Had no idea that your own vehicle's system to start the car could be used against it. So it's a very interesting idea. Obviously with your wallets, a lot of those now have RFID blockers. So pretty cool and at a really cheap price. All of our subscribers get a deep discount with those guys. Check them out, man. I think it's actually a pretty cool thing to protect your second biggest investment. So let's go ahead and start with the M&P 10 millimeter, man. You're going to get two magazines. They're not 12 rounds. They're not 10 rounds. 15 rounds, dude. And I'm going to compare it to a couple of other pistols here and show you the size on this. It, it's, it may surprise some of you how small they were actually able to keep this gun considering. 4-inch barrel, you also have a 4.6-inch barrel if you want to go with that, with or without a safety. That's something they put on pretty much all of their pistols, so you have that option. Weight, 27.8 ounces unloaded, so it's not a lightweight by any means. 7.2 inches in overall length, 1.3 inches wide, 5.6 inches high, and of course we have two 15-round mags is what it came with. Let's walk around the gun and uh, look at some of these differences and then we'll compare it a little bit. So now at the front here, you have your front slide serrations, which is cool, but they've taken these slide serrations and moved them all the way up now. So in order to, your, to do your press checks on the, on the other pistols, kind of like what they've done here, it, you still have plenty to grip onto as long as your thumbs are, are you know pretty much all the way down there. This just gives it a better surface all the way around. You don't really have to worry about your, your hands slipping off of that. I just, I like that. That's something I personally wanted, and they've now done that. The frame is reinforced. They started this on the M2.0 lineup, but it just helps with rigidity whenever you're firing and helps keep the gun from flexing uh, as much. So that's already there. Of course, you have your Armor Knight finish, stainless steel, slide and barrel. Nothing's changed there. Fish scale style serrations in the rear. Magazine release right there, again, pretty much like the M2.0, positive, no issues with it, really mags pop right out of there, so that works as it should, it is reversible, you now have a flat face trigger, and I'm noticing a pattern with Smith & Wesson, they'll roll out a change on their shield lineup, because the shield seems to be what sets the bar for them, and then, it, and that goes well, they'll roll those changes out in their full size and compact lineup, so eh, pretty cool there. 
high night sight straight from the factory. This is very good. One gripe I had with the Walther PDP, not to pick on that gun, that's an awesome gun, but they give you the optics ready slide, all right? Already cut for your optics, whatever, but they don't give you suppressor height sights to co-witness with an optic. Smith & Wesson does that, they're steel sights. Nothing too special with the sights, you know, just three white dots, but they do the job and yeah, it's pretty cool. You can see your extractor right there, slide stop on this side of the gun. So if you're, if you are a left-handed shooter, you can make this pistol adaptable to you. You're going to get four back strap options. It comes installed with the medium one on here. This is the aggressive texturing. They've been doing this for a while. I really like it. Miss Tech Shot hates it. <laughs> so uh, you have that option there, but it is pretty aggressive, dude, in the hand. But with that 10 millimeter round, you don't want anything. I, I don't think you want anything less. It really helps to keep the gun locked into your hand. 18 degree grip angle, all that good stuff that they've been doing for a long time. So nothing's really changed there. You're gonna get these additional plates right here. And these this is gonna cover such a wide variety of different optics and stuff for you. I got the Holosun HS507C currently on here right now. Peephole, so you can see your brass down in the chamber. Again, that's a uh, Smith & Wesson thing. Very comfortable in the hand, very natural point of aim. This is just Smith & Wesson, dude. I love this grip angle uh, and really love the way this gun points. It's very natural. So let's look at it compared to some other guns. So this is the Smith & Wesson m and 45. We keep this one in the nightstand year round, all right? This is a 10 round gun in the 45, 15 rounds in the m and 10 mil. And if we look at them, you can see they are almost, now I got the optic on this one, I can't really put them on their, on their, on their backs there, but you can see they are essentially the same size, 10 rounds in 45. 15 and 10 mil. That's pretty huge, I think. When I saw that originally, I was like, dang, they actually kept the size really good here. So the Performance Center m 9 absolutely love it. You can see I kind of take my optics and I move them from gun to gun. <laughs> Whatever, it's just one of those things. But this is a full-size m and Obviously, it's, it's quite a bit shorter, about the same width. But again, if you look at the size, the m and 9 is 17 rounds, by the way. If you look at the length, dude, they are just about even. So that's pretty cool, man. Let's check it out compared to Glock 19, which is considered to be one of the best size guns out there. Uh, Smith & Wesson's a little bit longer. If we look at them like this, Smith & Wesson might be a little bit wider. Again, the Glock is a nine millimeter, keep that in mind. And then if I show them just like this, Raise that up just a little bit. It's kind of hard to do it when the optics on there. I'm just looking at. I'm just basically. I'm just matching that up right there. You can see the Smith and Wesson probably maybe an inch longer, something like that. Maybe three quarters of an inch. Not too bad considering you have 10 millimeter versus nine. So we're actually going to do a, a, an entire video showing. 10 millimeter versus nine millimeter recoil and some of the advantages and disadvantages 10 and nine millimeter will offer. So stay tuned for that. That's something we've already shot uh, and we should be rolling that out here very soon actually. Let's break it down, then we'll hit the range. Again, like pretty much all Smith & Wessons or the M&Ps, slide back, lever down. And technically you don't have to pull the trigger there's a little bar in there you can push down. I just always make sure I'm clear, pull the trigger, slide comes right off. You have the recoil spring right here. It's painted red. This red paint is going to get all on the inside of your gun when you shoot it. It's kind of one of those things. It is what it is. Firing pin block, all that good stuff. Rails, points of contact right here. I've already cleaned this gun up after we shot it because I know we were doing the review. And yeah, so we shot right at 250 rounds. And we're going to show you most of that shooting right here. When we come back, we'll talk about pros and cons. I'll show you the trigger and what the weight of the trigger looks like. And we'll finish the video out. Check this out.
Let's go take a look at this. So just to kind of show you where this first group was, my Hollison is off just a little bit. So I was aiming about right here and consistently hitting right here. But just to kind of show you the first grouping, really not bad. I just need to bring the dot up just a little bit to, uh, to, to get us more center mass. Not too bad for the uh, second mag right there. Nathan Wesson, you killed it, dude. You outdid yourself this time. So hopefully y'all enjoy that, man. We put a good number of rounds through this gun. Because I wanted to get this thing out pretty quickly, I wanted to make sure I put a lot of rounds through it to ensure that what I was telling you, I felt good about so the gun ran as expected no issues i put a variety a couple of different uh brands of ammo through it i think i put some magtech ammo through it and then i put something else i found somewhere i don't know um i don't even remember what it was i just found some somewhere and bought it because i knew i needed it so uh anyways the gun ran as expected once i got i did a first shots video and my dot was off a little bit once i got the dot situated the gun is as accurate as I can be or Miss Tech Shot can be. The trigger on this thing is awesome, dude. Let me show you this. So, they now no longer do they do the split. If you don't, if you're not familiar with this, I'll show you. They used to do the split hinge design right here, which has gotten a lot better over time. And this one right here is from Performance Center, so it's pretty amazing actually. Reset. Boom right there. Sometimes it would lead to inconsistencies with that kind of deep curve. It does flatten out as you pull it a little bit though. But with the flat face trigger, generally it's going to be more consistent now. So you can see now instead of the hinge, you have that little dingish right there in the middle. You pull back, a little bit of creep, and boom, breaks. Reset, boom, ready to go again. Very nice job on the trigger. Let me show you what the weight of the trigger is. Five pounds, one ounce. Let's try it again. Five pounds, seven ounces. Right at five pounds for the MMP 10 millimeter. That is pretty dang impressive. And I think the results that we just showed you uh, kind of speak for themselves there. As far as felt recoil, 
this was something I was interested in because he really the only 10 millimeter experience I have is the Smith and Wesson revolver 10 millimeter. So my first few shots, I was pretty impressed, man. I thought as far as recoil, what I could compare it to is like 45, mm -hmm. which is a little bit more punch to it. So on camera, you're going to see now compared to nine, because we actually shot the FN 509 after this. I was like, dude, nine feels like i mean i know nine is a generally soft shooting round but shooting the two back to back it was a pretty stark difference uh this i feel like this round just kind of there 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 obviously there is muzzle rise but i feel like it just kind of pushes back against you just a little bit more so than anything it's not snappy like 40 or 357 sig it just kind of pushes you level the sights back out boom you're ready to go pretty awesome some of the research I've done on 10, 10 millimeter too uh, really makes me confident and happy. And, and, and I hope more manufacturers will follow along with this because this is a uh, pretty awesome round from what I've read um, in certain areas. And again, I'll talk about that more in the 10 versus 9 millimeter uh, round. But one thing I will say here is that you don't lose as many rounds compared to 45. 45 is a big old bullet, big old slug. And you're going to lose capacity, whereas you get a little bit better ballistics with 10 millimeter, and you're not going to lose as much capacity as you do getting against 45. So that's pretty dang impressive, I think. So when you compare the two, uh, that's just something to consider there. Trigger did great. The gun worked as it should. This grip texturing, Mrs. Tech Shot hates it. Uh, this is not something she's ever been a fan of. Is these really aggressive? Texturings to me, obviously, I love it because it helps to keep the gun locked in your hand. To her, it just really hurts to shoot, and I'm just kind of gripping the gun harder than what I normally do. And you can see, I mean, it leaves indentions in your hand. I didn't find it that uncomfortable. She did. That's just something I wanted to report back to y'all. She's never been a fan of that though, so I don't think it's exclusive to this gun. I think it was a little bit worse with this gun because you get a little bit more recoil than the typical nine millimeter that we're shooting. Okay, so there's that. So that's a con on her side, not necessarily on mine. Pick rail up front, slide serrations, love that they changed that. Stainless steel, slide, barrel, suppressor height, sights to co-witness with your optic. Do I wish they were night sights? Yes. Are they gonna come out with a night sight version? I'm sure they will. Will they come out with a ported version? I'm sure they will. Will they come out with a performance center? I'm sure they will. <laughs> I've been following Smith & Wesson for a long time. I kind of know how they do things by now. So if there's those other versions that you tend to like more, you know, more than likely they're going to come out uh, with, with another version like that, okay? But for what this gun is, dude, I absolutely, positively love this thing, dude. And I can see why people have been asking about this for so many years. Pretty badass round and a badass pistol. There's not too much to hate about this gun. It was reliable. Dude, I love it. The trigger, serrations. What else can I say here, dude? It's a Smith & Wesson M&P in 10 mil with some of the upgrades that we've all kind of been wanting. Uh, it's a winner in my book. 9.5 out of 10. You can say what you want, but I absolutely love this gun, man. Not too much to hate on here. Thank you guys for watching, dude. I want to see what uh, your reaction is and what your thoughts are on the MMP 10 millimeter R. You plan on getting one? Or are you not? Why and why not? Whatever you think, man. Thank you so much. If you want to support our channel, consider helping us out on Patreon. You can join for $1 a month if you would like. I'll leave a link down below. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.